Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful Labor Day today. Time to relax, rest, rejuvenate. Been a difficult year so far. Let's hope the rest of it becomes a lot better than what it was. Anyway, today we're going to deal with the topic of comparing Google Chrome with Mozilla Firefox, two of the most popular browsers out there. Specific areas we're going to look at is the speed of memory usage of both, under the hood, being able to customize the browser, the user interface, and last but most important, so please stay tuned to the end for this particular topic. That is your privacy and security. Which browser measures up to keeping you safe on the internet? So come along. Let's have a look at these two browsers together. Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox? What is your preference? And boy, I've had some doozy arguments when it comes to comparing these two browsers with various people. As about, it gets as about as heated as comparing Tim Hortons versus Starbucks users. To start off, I want to bring up the task manager. The task manager is going to help us see the memory and the CPU usage of both browsers. And here we're going to compare the speed and memory between the two. Right click on your taskbar at the bottom, bring up the task manager, and under the options tab, I want this always on top. So we've set it to always on top. I'm just going to push it down to the screen because all we're interested in is what shows up under the currently running apps. First, click on CCleaner which is a program I've installed uh, that I described in my previous video, which was how to set up Windows 10. I'll link that on the top here for you, so please do click on that and check it out. Let's run CCleaner. CCleaner gets rid of all the temp, the cookies, the cache, basically everything that accumulates on your computer to slow it down. In the Applications tab here, you can see in Mozilla Firefox, I've selected to delete everything. Same thing as Chrome, including any saved passwords, preferences, downloads, you name it. It's all been selected to clear off. So let's run it. Okay, that is done now. Let's open up Mozilla Firefox. I want this on the right-hand side of my screen. Quick keyboard shortcut for you. Windows key and the left arrow puts it onto the left side of the screen. If I were to do Windows key right arrow, it'll be on the right. Google Chrome, I want this on the right hand side. Now what I've done just ahead of time to save you having to watch me type in websites is I've preloaded four websites for both browsers. The exact same loading in the same order. Keep an eye on the CPU use and the memory use at the bottom over here. Another shortcut for both browsers is you can right click on your bookmarks toolbar, go open all in tabs, same thing on here, open all four, and there we can see all the websites have loaded up. Now, when you're comparing memory use and CPU use, there is a difference between them. And honestly, speed of memory, Google Chrome does come out ahead of Mozilla Firefox in that sense. But honestly, in perspective, let's look at this. For the average user, when you're switching back and forth between different tabs and doing various things in your browsers, how many of us are really going to notice the speed difference? When you're doing testing, sure, you'll notice the difference and you can say, well, this one's better because of it uses three megabytes less memory. But that doesn't really make that much of a difference, to be honest. So Google Chrome, they've got one up on this particular aspect of the browsers. Under the hood, both browsers honestly are fairly similar in terms of features that they add. Google Chrome was released in 2008, which is based on the Chromium browser. Other browsers also using that particular browser is Opera, Vivaldi, Brave. There's a couple of other ones as well. So its source is in the open market. Firefox is developed by Mozilla and they released it in 2004. But the big difference here is that Google Chrome, although its roots are in open source, Google has complete control over this right now. And they are an advertising giant. And their entire 
line is based on advertising, pushing ads out, generating revenue from advertising. Whereas Firefox, on the other hand, is based on public feedback, contributors, community members. They're open to the public to get feedback. So although it's not open source code, they are far more open to the public than I would say Google Chrome is at this point. So in respect in that area, under the hood, I would say that both have mobile versions, both have good desktop versions, both work under Mac OS, they work under Linux, Windows, Android, iOS. So there's a pretty even spread across the board for what both browsers can do. But because of the fact of how there are different corporate mentalities, I would say when it comes to under the hood, Firefox has one up on Google Chrome in this sense. Let's put these browsers back side by side here. So Windows key, right arrow for Chrome, Windows key, left arrow for Mozilla Firefox. When it comes to customizing, Google Chrome is far, far more customizable. I would assume this is because they now currently have about 65 to 70% of the market share, whereas Mozilla Firefox only has around about 10% of the share. Where I have an issue with Google Chrome, is you want to look for an add-on or an extension. You would think if you click on the top right corner over here, you would find add-ons or extensions or something in the list. If you go into settings, scroll down a bit and nope, nothing there. If you go into full screen, you get extensions on the left-hand side. Let's search for an extension called LastPass. Nope, nothing is found. And that's because the extensions are not actually in the browser itself. You have to go to Google's site. So you have to first search for it and go into the Google's website to actually find any of the extensions. Then from here, you can find them no problem. So to me, it's an extra, extra step that really I don't like doing. In Mozilla Firefox, they make it easier. You click on the top here. There's your add-ons right there. And as soon as you come into here, you start typing, and there we go. We have the add-ons that we need. Now search for LastPass, because this is one that I recommend all of you use, or at least use some form of password manager. Do not save your passwords when you're browsing the internet. Get a password manager and use it instead. For downloading, I am not a fan of Mozilla Firefox. Let's just download a file. We'll download the same file on both browsers, and I'll show you what I'm getting at when it comes to this. Let's click on download there, save the file, download on Chrome. Now, unless you know Mozilla Firefox, see at the top over here, you've got this blue download icon. If you click on it, you can see the file you just downloaded. To me, that's way too small, and the average person who's just starting to use a computer or starting to use Firefox has no idea that that's actually the download. Google Chrome at least is better because you can see in the bottom left corner here, there is the file you just downloaded and you can click on it to run it and do whatever you need to do. So for me, Chrome is easier in that sense. Now it used to be that the autocomplete bar was way better in Google Chrome. But what I mean by autocomplete is this browser bar at the top here. If you start typing, say for example, Microsoft, See how it automatically makes suggestions on which site you're looking for. So in this case, we'll go to Microsoft. In Mozilla Firefox, same thing. They're almost identical now. So do use your web address bar as your search bar because it uses your default search engine that you've got highlighted. With Mozilla Firefox, there's various things that they've added to it to try and help, such as creating a, an account that you can sign on to to share your saved hyperlinks with other computers so when you log on to the same browser on a different computer all of your links will still be there i use this myself but if you're more security conscious don't enable that feature they also have pockets and here's something that i really like in mozilla firefox if you're on a website you can right click on it and here's a take a screenshot option so you can highlight a particular area that you want to do a screenshot of, or you can drag your cursor to do a particular area. 
That to me is a really handy feature when you're on the web on a particular website. Google Chrome doesn't have this. So in that sense, Firefox comes up a little bit better out of the box than what Google Chrome does. But long-term use, nope. Google Chrome has it when it comes to customizing because of the sheer number of add-ons that they have. Okay, I've switched our browsers back to the side-by-side -side comparison because here we're going to look at the user interface. Honestly, when you look at the two browsers side-by-side, -side, they're pretty much identical. A couple of minor differences at the top, but other than that, depending on the website you're loading, nowadays with the new behind-the-scenes programming of websites, if they're done properly, no matter which browser you're using, you'll get an almost consistent feel and look of the particular website. A feature that I do like is the fact that both browsers have added this wonderful feature. Let's have a look. I'm just trying to open up a web, uh, a search that has horizontal scrolling enabled because it, the size of the page is larger than the particular browser window. So you can see at the bottom here, you can drag the scroll bar to the left and right to see the whole screen. But here's another shortcut that you should know. If you use your scroll button on your mouse, you go up and down. If you press and hold down your shift key and use the scroll button, you go left and right. That works perfectly in Firefox. Same thing works in Google Chrome. So for that sense, a great thing to have. Here's something that I really, really like about Google Chrome. Right click on any image in Google Chrome and you can do a search for that particular image. See Google image and it'll tell you where else that image appears or who else is using the image or similar images. So if you're looking for stuff, that's really a handy feature to have. So each of them have done a few things, small things here and there to enhance the user experience. So I, honestly, when it comes to the user interface, from my perspective, I would say it's pretty much a tie. Okay, the final point I'm gonna deal with is the one to me that's the most critical, and that's privacy and security. This didn't used to be such a concern, but it is now. Firefox, they've added enhanced tracking protection that keeps your identity safe. Google has enhanced web experience that tracks everything you do so that they can serve up better ads to you. That to me is a huge problem. And anybody who doesn't see an issue with Google tracking every website. So in that sense, yeah, there's a definite problem that I have with Google Chrome. When it comes to the privacy of between the two browsers, you can go onto Mozilla's website and you can look up anything you want in terms of what they're going or what they're doing with their browser. Everything is designed around your privacy. Google Chrome, you'll be lucky to find any anything that could help you with selecting privacy or maintaining your privacy or anything like that because they don't. Honestly, Google Chrome is an advertising master. They know how to serve up ads. They're good at it. They do the same with YouTube. So they're a fantastic company when it comes to dealing with ads. Both browsers support what's called a sandboxing mode. Both block third-party tracking cookies. But here's where Firefox comes out ahead. Firefox also has the ability to block crypto mining scripts and social trackers. So it is honestly, when it comes to privacy and security, hands down, Mozilla Firefox wins. And to me, that is why I switched to Firefox instead of Chrome, because I do or I am concerned about my privacy on the internet. Thanks for sticking by. I hope you found this topic of interest to you. And I hope that the information provided will help you make a better decision as to which browser would become your default. Bear in mind, I do use multiple browsers because certain websites just won't work with one or more of browsers. So I typically have Google Chrome configured, I have Mozilla Firefox, and I also use Microsoft Edge. But my default, because of the security and privacy issues, is definitely Mozilla Firefox. 
So if you found this topic to be of interest to you, give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel in the bottom. And above all, stay safe and have a wonderful, relaxing day. We'll catch you in the next video.